Armageddon 2000 kicks off with the Radicals, Demolinko, Perry Saturn and Eddie Guerrero defeating Team Extreme, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy and Lita. And the match weren't ever so important. Yes, Demolinko toys with Lita at the end of the match before making a submit. But it was more about the storyline. Demolinko wins a date with Lita who he seems to have this big massive desire to be with. But it ends up being a big setup from the Hardys who attack Demolinko after you see Lita in her underwear laying on the bed looking fantastic and really hot. And yeah, and I can see why he wanted a date with her. But I was really glad that there was more of a meaning behind this. Because this eventually led to Matt Hardy and Lita joining together in such a beautiful relationship. Next, we had a great heel, a good mic talker and a good commissioner. But didn't quite make it as high as he could have in his career. William Regal defending his European Championship against a... Good tag team partner, but a better hardcore champion, Hardcore Holly. There wasn't really much to this match. It's not going to go down as one of the best European Championship matches. Raven ends up helping William Regal get the win over Hardcore Holly. I'm not sure where this uh, storyline or feud went next. Was at the end of Regal and Holly, why Raven got involved? But it was just good to see Regal back in action or in action because now, because when he faded away, I felt they could have done more with him. As much as I could annoy you with the right sense of theme, I'm not going to bother. The feud between Val Venus and China, yes, there was things that happened in this. Yes, it was a female fighting a male wrestler that was in a way bigger than her. But it was good to see them showing China's performance against a male wrestler. The feud here was probably Right Sensor's biggest feud. I can't really think what else Right Sensor actually accomplished, apart from getting involved in pretty much every wrestler on the roster because they didn't agree with the way they were. But basically, Val Venus defeats China at this pay per view. In a somewhat okay match. But again not a very memorable one. The last man standing match. Against a monstrous Kane. The man who would destroy anyone. Wanted to get rid of anyone. Who stepped in his way or tried to cross him. Against his opponent. The guy who was continuing to make a name for himself. Go against various wrestlers to do that. Chris Jericho. This match is why I love the Monster Kane. This match showed that Kane used to be able to give us high quality matches. He, he goes into this match, does his monstrous move, sits up. Jericho shows us that he's not going to back down against anyone. And it finished in an interesting way. They made use of outside the ring, the ramp. And the barrels that were up out on the ramp fall down on Kane and he stays down for the 10 count. And then you get the shredder kind of feeling that Kane's going to return. What a brilliant match. I really enjoyed this. And this helped Kane to move forward. This put Jericho higher up. Very nicely done, WWE. This was a great match for Armageddon 2000. Every tag team in this championship match put on a good performance. We had Edge and Christian, we had K Quick and Road Dog, get rowdy, and we had the Dudleys, we had White Descent, who were the current champions. After many good performances, especially one of my favourites, Shake, Rat and Roll, from both Road Dog and uh, Bob Ray Dudley, before they hit each other, once they realised they're mimicking each other. Brilliant, entertaining, and we, at the end, Get the winners from Edge and Christian. Edge and Christian, you expect them to go into a match, look good and come out the winners. Not saying I was disappointed with them winning, but still they were 
pretty much the wrestlers who went into a lot of tag team matches and won and came out champions at the end. But the tag team division back here was brilliant. You could have so many great performances, giving us great matches. And this was an example of an entertaining tag team match. You had the current IC champion, Billy Gunn, who was known for different personas in his time in the WWF, WWE. Pick your favourite against his opponent. Hello, can I, can I, can I say, can I say his name? Am I allowed to say his name? It's okay now? Yeah? Okay. Okay, I just had to make sure I can say this name live on the internet. Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit didn't really give us the best performance in this match, even though he did end up defeating uh, Billy Gunn and becoming the new IC champion. The Women's Championship match. I felt that maybe China could have been better in this match, but she got her championship chance later down the line. So leaving her to show up her abilities against a male wrestler and leaving Ivory to retain her women's championship against Trish and Molly Holly, it, it was good. It was good enough. Even though this match was short, not much to it, it was what happened after the match that caught the attention. You had Crash Holly coming out to attack TNA, <laughs> Test and Albert, which brought back APA, Bradshaw and Farouk, the returning acolytes. They come in and start fighting against TNA, which this was the feud that you remember, one of the feuds you remember, more than likely, between these two tag teams. So it's great to see the APN, APA. I miss them. Great tag team. And that after match was better than the actual women's championship match. Maybe I could have spoken about the earlier card in a short amount of time. But I actually thought this was an okay pay-per-view. Good performance from wrestlers. But the thing that really stole this pay-per-view was the video packages from the wrestlers involved in the Hell in the Cell, the Armageddon Hell in the Cell, how they spoke about going into this match and how they felt. Mick Foley saying how much of a great idea this is. And for some reason, Vince McMahon, the guy with all the creative ideas, the guy who would pretty much do anything that his twisted mind would come up with, seemed to be against the idea of Hell in the Cell. He wanted the fans to fight against McFoley's decision. Maybe it was more because Stephanie was praising Vince not to do this. Don't put Triple H through this because of his previous head in the cell against McFoley. But the match still goes ahead. And the match, oh my gosh. Say what you want. Name your favourite head in the cell match. But I thoroughly enjoyed this. It was full of great spots, you know, spots that drew blood, entertainment for the fans, moments for each wrestler. The match put over each wrestler individually as they all get their own spot. And I really felt the match picked up the longer it went. When they got to the top of the Hender Cell, that's where the big things happened. The moves that happened against the steel. The amount of things that happened up at the top of the high structure. This Hen the Cell entertained me a hell of a lot. And hence why the word hell is involved in Hen the Cell, I'm guessing. And at the end, Kurt Angle defeats the likes of Triple H, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Rikishi and Taker, who Vince McMahon named as the top guys of this part of the Attitude Era. Hands down, this pay-per-view entertained me, the main event stole it for me, but share your thoughts on this. I could watch this Hen Cell back again and still feel the enjoyment, the entertainment from it. And now this just leaves me to pull the next pay-per-view out of the hat. And the pay-per-view is... Bad Blood 97. 